These are solar panels that only work in the dark and they're coming at a critical time. Every single tech CEO is saying the same thing. Solar. Solar houses. Solar will end up being huge. We want to keep driving solar. Our energy demand is exploding. The grid is under pressure and we need a breakthrough to keep up. When I came across these nighttime solar panels, my brain lit up. This could be it. A way to unlock clean 24 seven power. I needed to know everything. In this episode, I'm going straight to the source to find out how they work and whether they're actually the solution that we've been waiting for. When we think about solar power at night, I can literally just run the movie backwards. On this show, my mission is to make deeply researched, highly energizing videos to help you understand technology and then feel optimistic about the future that we can build with it. And this story starts in 1954 and it's wild. Scientists at Bell Labs created the world's first practical solar panel and it felt like a miracle. Lights on, she works. Lights off, the motor stops. Each panel is made up of tiny cells that are kind of like mini energy factories. And when the sun hits into it, it causes these silicon electrons to loosen, move around and get excited, thus immediately creating electricity. This was brilliant, but there was one massive problem. It was absurdly expensive to make. In the 1950s, solar energy cost around $300 per watt, which means powering a single 100 watt light bulb would have cost $30,000. For comparison, that same bulb powered by coal back then would have cost less than a penny a day. So yeah, solar sounded like a fantasy. Nice idea, but it's never going to scale was the common sentiment back then. But a handful of scientists didn't give up. They kept working on this and refining it year after year after year. China has been a massive part of that story. They've introduced industrial factories where they've dropped the hardware prices by more than 80%. And one of the other major breakthroughs was solar panels that are able to absorb sunlight from both the front and the back, which boosted energy output by 10 to 20% without a significant additional cost. So in 1954, it cost around $300 per watt, but now most recently in 2024, it costs 20 cents per watt, which is a massive difference. The work ethic to get here causing the decrease in the price is a huge part of the story. And you know who else has been working year after year after year? Microsoft Teams, which is free, and they're actually the sponsor of this video. Microsoft Teams is super easy to use, and I use it all the time for research calls, for planning for shoots, and for connecting with the team. And Teams has free 60 minute video calls in comparison to 40 minutes on others. They also have unlimited chat and file sharing built right into the same app that runs on desktop or mobile. And it's backed by Microsoft to invest over $1 billion annually in security to protect its cloud infrastructure. Whether you're running a side project, organizing a team, or just trying to stay in touch with colleagues, I check it out. And you can sign up totally for free at aka.ms slash nothing but tech. I'm also gonna link that below. And I'm so honored to be working with them. So in the last 10 years, the three reasons why solar energy has become significantly cheaper is number one, mass production. The second reason is material choices. We've gotten better at picking more efficient, cheaper materials. And number three, government subsidies. Especially in China, the government has really subsidized the production of solar energy and also the research into it. And that has made solar energy now one of the cleanest energy sources in the world, which is insane. So it was at this point in the story that I felt like we solved the biggest problem and that we should be rocking and rolling. But not really, because there's another problem that no one talks about enough. We are a lot better at creating energy than we are at storing energy. Solar technology you know, has gotten so cheap that you know, it produces this very low cost electricity. But the challenge now is we need to store it so we can use it when we need it. Solar only works when the sun is out. But our energy system is built on the idea that electricity can be turned on and off instantly. With fossil fuels, we can increase or decrease the amount of energy they produce based on demand. We just burn more or less depending on how much we need. But with solar, it doesn't work like that. We can't just tell the sun when to shine. So if we generate power and no one's using it, it's immediately wasted. Like turning on a sink with no glass underneath. And storing the extra energy is a lot harder than it sounds. Most electrical grids today aren't built to hold onto energy. They're designed to move it. Some countries have come up with like clever workarounds for this. For example, Switzerland uses hydro pump storage, basically two lakes at different elevations. When there's excess energy, they pump water uphill. And then later when the demand spikes, they let the water flow back down. 
generating electricity almost like a massive battery. But that only works in very specific geographies and it doesn't fix solar's biggest issue. We can't control when the sun is shining, how bright it is, or whether the night gets in the way. So an Australian professor named Ned Equinox locked in and created a massive breakthrough. Energy flows from the sun to the earth. It comes in the form of sunlight, of course. Yep. And when it lands on earth, it will heat things up. If it happens to hit a solar panel, it will immediately generate electricity. I can literally just run the movie backwards. So the scientists at UNSW figured out how to flip solar energy inside out. It's called thermodiactive technology. During the day, the earth soaks up heat. And then at night, it radiates that heat back into space as like invisible infrared energy. These new panels use a thermoelectric device to capture the heat escaping from Earth and then turn it into a small stream of electricity. This was a moment my brain lit up. I started picturing rooftops with daytime solar panels and nighttime solar panels, a 24 seven energy grid. So exciting. But what we could do right now is we could power a wristwatch Mm. from your body heat. A really good solar panel might produce something like 230 watts of electrical okay. power okay. for every square meter okay. when the sun's shining. The best thermoradiated device we would ever be able to make would produce about one watt of power wow. for every square meter. For the Earth's surface, for a spacecraft, it's a bit higher. Mm. For a spacecraft, I think in principle, we could get up to 10. Okay, so that means that nighttime solar panels produce significantly less electricity than daytime solar panels, which means that they can't power an entire town or even an entire house. That was initially a little bit disappointing to hear, and it means that maybe my dream of 24 seven solar energy isn't gonna happen tomorrow, but talking to Professor Ned Ekondoks reframed everything for me. First, it's wild that we live in a time where scientists have literally invented a way to invert solar energy. And second, we're gonna need all of this because our energy demand isn't just rising, it's surging. AI is getting better and better every single day and we have trains, planes, cars, and homes that all need to be powered. Our energy demand won't be solved by one breakthrough, but it will be a combination of many things, nuclear, wind, solar energy, all working together to power the next big ideas. So while this one solar panel by itself isn't the unlock to everything, it's proof that we're inventing new things and that the best ideas may be hidden in plain sight.